You're listening to Paris Search Radio. News, views and reviews from the world of the paranormal from across the UK and beyond. Find us on Facebook, Twitter and the World Wide Web. Paris Search UK Radio. Paris Search Radio, broadcasting to the UK and beyond. The views and opinions expressed by presenters and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the official policy or position of Parasearch Radio or its affiliates and sponsors. Listener discretion is advised. You're listening to The Spectral Zone with host Kaz Rooney. Good evening everyone and welcome to the Spectral Zone on Parasearch Radio. I'm your host, I'm Kaz Rooney. And tonight we don't have one guest, we don't have two, we have three guests for you. Three guests, how good is that? So we have... Joining me tonight, we have Sam Bennett. Hello. We have Ashley Buckingham. Hey, guys. And we have Barry Guy. Hey, everybody. How are you all doing, guys? Yeah, good, thank you. Yeah. Oh. Awesome, I'm thank good, you. Thanks. I'm good. Thank you for coming on the show. Um, so, where do you want to start, guys? Well, we start with where you all started with the paranormal. What got you all, what's the one thing that got you all hooked on the paranormal? I'll start with Sam. I knew you were going to go with me. Yeah. <laughs> um, I didn't really have a choice um, whether or not I wanted to go into the paranormal. It kind of was with me all my life. So, um, yeah, I've been with it, working with it, I should say, from the age of one, is what my mum says, so 45 years. And it kind of continued, tried to get rid of it. Um, but by the time I was 13, bang, it was my life. <laughs> How could you get rid of it? <clears throat> um, trying to ignore all the signs. I thought I was crazy and um, going mental. It wasn't the normal average teenager, I think, um, as I got older. Um, I could see things that other people couldn't see. I mean, you know, do you know like the film Sixth Sense? Yeah. And it says, I see dead people. That's it. I saw dead people from the age of one upwards. Um, really? Yeah. And um, it was quite, obviously, as a child, you don't realise that they're dead. I just thought they were my friends. and um, But my mum could never see them. And it really, really messed up, like, my, my ways and my behaviour um, quite a bit. And then, you know... I wouldn't, you know, eat dinners and things like that unless my mum fed them as well. And being um, on a single uh, parent wage, yeah, it was a lot of money to waste back in the day <laughs> if my mum cooked a dinner for somebody else that was never there. So, um, yeah, no, it was just a different approach to normal life, I think. I was just very open, very sensitive and very aware. Wow. What about you, Barry? Well, my, my experiences started as a child as well. I had personal paranormal experiences that I just couldn't explain. Um, there were things that took place in the house, um, everything from objects moving, uh, being touched, hearing footsteps, um, to more sinister things where um, I was physically assaulted by something unseen. And, and all of this kind of stemmed from me um, doing a spirit board, um, a Ouija board at the age of 10. Um, and, and it really culminated in, in, in violent acts and, and things that terrified me as a kid. But the thing is, your curiosity gets the better of you. And as a, as a child, you know, you're interested, you're scared at the same time. So I just spent time looking into things, researching, doing my own, doing my own, you know, kind of um, uh, research and preparation and that kind of stuff. And, and as, I, as I grew up into my teens, um, these, these events that took place, became more frequent and some of them more disturbing, but I wasn't as scared anymore. And I went to uh, university and in my, sec in my second year of university, I 
went to to bed bed about 2 a.m. I hadn't been drinking that night. (laughs) uh, I uh, turned out the light and all of a sudden I felt someone grab my uh, my left shoulder and start to wake me as if, you know, like, get up, get up. And, and I thought it was a flatmate, so I pulled the cover off my face and I was ready to say, what? And there was a little girl stood by my bed and it was, she was see-through, you know. I could see her, I could see the wall, I could see everything. I knew instinctively and immediately that it was a spirit. And, and I jumped, I overreacted by kind of fly kicking her in the head. But <laughs> <laughs> and, and I, I did, honestly. Uh, that was my martial arts training coming into practice there. And I, and I, I just leapt off the bed and she dissipated into the room. And after that, I knew what I'd seen. I knew what was there and I just wanted to find out more. So after I graduated, I set up my own um, forum back in the day when forums were all the rage, you know, chat rooms, that kind of stuff. Um, and I was a pretty good web designer. I built a website, built, you know, a forum and um, set up the Ghost Finder Paranormal Society, which became, you know, my team that I still run. And it, it had thousands. We're talking oh, was more than tens of thousands of members worldwide. Um, and I, I then had a team of maybe 15 to 20 people that were investigators that wanted to go out there and do their own practical investigations. as group there. Oh, cool. I've lost, lost everyone. everyone. Oh, yeah. no, we're here. I thought I lost Barry. Spirit interaction. <laughs> so you found it, well, that one experience, I mean, fly kicking a ghost spirit girl. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's got to be one of the most interesting ones I've heard, to be fair. <laughs> Well, it was one of those immediate kind of responses, you know. I was, it, was, it made me jump, so I just jumped off the bed and out came my leg, but she didn't disappear, and I didn't kick anything, anything solid anyway. So it, it was that experience that took everything else in my life and just threw it into context, and I thought, you know what, I'm going to start my own team. I'm going to do this for a living. It's going to be my job. Wow. What about you, Ashley? What started you off on this journey? Um, um, probably the same as Baz, personal experience as a young child. Um, yeah. I used to claim, I used to claim to my mum that I would be pulled down the bottom of my bed. Um, she wouldn't believe me. Um, and then after that, it wasn't until I told my nan, when my nan visited us from, uh, Grantham. And, um, she's, my son, my nan's a medium. And, uh, she said, I really believe what you're saying. My, you know, at the time, my step and mum was in disbelief. Um, just you know, I thought I was making up things or just lying, as you know, about it all. And um, it wasn't until my nan sat me down and said, "Like, this, you're at an age now, I can tell you um, that obviously I can communicate with spirits and I can communicate with ghosts." And I become really fascinated with it. So I built like a lot of bigger relationship with my nan at the time, um, and she was like talking me through things and things like this. Um, and she she told me to stay clear of a Ouija board. Okay. So obviously, being a young a young child. Um, not listening to anyone. Mm-hmm. Uh, i never done that. So I was about 12 years old, and a friend of mine called Sean, who's also in Ghost Fighters Paranormal Society with Barry, which also I'm in as well, um, we went to an abandoned uh, mental asylum and decided to do a Ouija board and a morgue table. And from then, I have kind of had bad vibes, bad times. Um, pretty much everyone I meet, spiritual wise, says that I seem to have a darker attachment side of things. Um, things started happening when my son was born. So okay. I chased, I chased and chased and chased down Barry to become a GPS member. <laughs> <laughs> Continuing my journey. And I'm yeah. sure very annoyed for him. And then Barry just give up. Barry ignored me because obviously I was doing this headed. So I chased Phil down. Um, and then in the end, I just said, look, you know, I really need to speak to you. Things are happening. Um, and I spoke to Barry and I kind of explained like a little layout of his house and certain objects in his house. Bear in mind, I never met the guy. Yeah. Um, never been to Felton before in my life before that. <laughs> and his, his reply was, uh, you're either under my bed or you're having an affair with my wife. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but it became uh, it become really interesting. And then from there, I, I still remember clear as day, my first investigation was with the team. It was meant to be in Hellfire Caves, but I think he got flooded out at the time so I actually joined Barry at the Leopard Inn in Stoke and it was a night I won't forget I caught a really good EVP 
Yeah. And, you know, since I've just decided to just thrive and just gain as much evidence as I can. And obviously, I've learned a lot of things from Barry and the other people in the team. So I just want to build my knowledge and then eventually share it with other people, you know, working with Sam as well at the Hellfire yeah. Caves a few times. Um, Sam sat in on the hub on the uh, on the Celebrity Ghost on Live. Yeah. So it was quite we all have between the three of us know like each other quite well and work quite well together. Yeah. So I just want to continue to chase 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 spirits and get some tangible evidence. So here's the thing, guys. I mean, we do all this investigating. I do investigating as well. What is your ultimate goal? What is the thing you think would prove to everyone what you believe to be true? So we'll start with Barry. That's the million dollar question though, isn't it, Kaz? You know, it's yeah. um, for me it's a personal pursuit that I wish yeah. to share with others. Um, I never I never grew up saying, Oh, I'm gonna make a TV show or any of that stuff. What what I actually said was I'm gonna investigate the paranormal and find answers to these things that have, you know, um, messed with my brain and, and, and scared me and made me more inquisitive as a child. Because I think, I, I believe in ghosts, I believe they exist, I believe in spirits in the afterlife, and it's because of personal perception. I've had experiences that I cannot explain. So the end game for me is to gather real tangible evidence to prove to myself and others that what I experienced, what others experience every day, and even keep it to themselves in most cases, is real. And there is something out there that we don't fully understand just yet. It'd be wonderful to guess it, wouldn't it? Mm, it, would. it would be wonderful. <laughs> what about you, Ashley? I don't know, really. This is a question I get asked quite often. Um, yeah. You know, among very other random questions about spirits and the beliefs, and you know, the amount of times I get asked if, like, you know, why can't we see dinosaur ghosts and things like that? Um, it just you get asked, obviously, ridiculous questions, and some things you just can't answer. So it's best not to answer. Um, you know, other than gaining like a whole worldwide screen that everyone can absolutely watch and try and see the best evidence possibly catch it. Yeah. I just honestly don't think that anyone's going to understand it fully until they pass away and then hopefully they're intelligent enough of a spirit to, you know, relate back to their friends that they've left behind who know that they're seeking for ghosts and seeking for spirits to uh, prove it. So I think it's just really hard and it's, it's, it's so hard to say anything about how it's ever going to be possibly, you know, proven 100%. I just, honestly, I don't think it ever will happen, to be fair. There's, there's always someone out there who's got a reason to, you know, say it's not. And then, obviously, all of us guys have got a reason to say there is. But I don't think there ever be just an out-and-out agreement where everything, you know, there is paranormal and there is a life after death. Well, that's the Can thing, Ashley. You're, all, thing you're always going to have sceptics, aren't you? Sorry, go ahead, Barry. Yeah, I'm just going to throw something in there to add to this. It's because... Although Ash is right and that it might never happen, you know, maybe not in that lifetime, but I'll be honest with you, a massive drive has taken place in the world of paranormal research over the last 50 years. You know, Tesla and Montoni and people, the great inventors of our time, they have provided us with footprints and plans that we can build upon. And IPC, you know, Instrumental Transcommunication, is, is leading the way in in defining and giving us real tangible evidence that spirits exist in another plane, another dimension, in that ether. We're able to communicate with spirits, and there are intelligent responses coming through, not just through psychics and mediums. We're talking about, you know, using equipment that produces sounds, words, you know, audio responses, full sentences, and direct intelligent responses from spirit. Yeah. This is the thing, though. It's whatever you do... Barry, there's always going to be someone who says, oh no, I can explain that, I can explain this, I can... Do you know what I mean? Yeah, there's yeah, always yeah, someone yeah. who argues the opposite. <laughs> I think that's because a lot of people are scared of the truth. I think so. Yeah. I think they are. Uh, one of the girls, we've actually got questions in the chat room. <laughs> And guess who they're from, Sam? Yeah, my lot, probably. <laughs> yeah, your lot. <laughs> Lisa Gardner is asking, what are you most looking forward to about doing Visby Abbey? I've never done it. Um, don't even know about it, to be fair. <laughs> I just said, yeah, I'll come along. 
Yeah, so yeah, I think for me, um, all of it really. What about you, Barry? Have you been to Rusby Abbey? No, I've never been there. I've mean, looked it up and had a look at the history and that kind of thing, which you know, it's important before you do any investigation. I think for me, I'm looking forward to meeting everybody. I'm looking forward to hopefully having experiences that are combined with everyone else that, you know, we go, wow, amazing. We have just captured something phenomenal that, again, defies logic, you know. That would be great. What about you, Ashley? What are you looking forward to? Um, well, I've done nothing about location. I chose not to research it. So yeah. I'm looking forward to that, going into that blind, which yeah. is nice. Um, and then obviously meeting everyone and, you know, obviously working alongside Barry and Sam again. Um, obviously more so with Sam, because I'm always working with Barry. <laughs> and yeah, just, you know, give give the public, you know, the best possibility to, you know, use their evening to, to, to do what we get to do. And, you know, luckily we get to do quite often and get to go to notorious places. So make, turn them into their investigation. Yeah, it's their night. It's not our night. We're just yeah. there to help them along. Well, this is the thing we should explain to everyone. What has actually brought us all together is Paranormal Charity Warriors. Yeah. And the whole reason behind Paranormal Charity Warriors is our friend Joanne Treherne. Yeah. Son Sean is 11 years old and he suffers from lipodystrophy. So we set up this group to help raise money for this condition because it is very rare. There's only 700 people who suffer from it in the UK. And there isn't a lot of money put into the research. So we want to get money for lipodystrophy UK and that's what's brought us all together. But I think the best person to tell you about Sam and mm -hmm. Joanne is probably... Sam, you tell them all about Joanne and Sean. Um, what can I say? Joanne's absolutely crazy, but I love her to bits. And uh, <laughs> I think she's, you know, she's the best person to be able to have a son like Sean with his illness. You know, very strong-minded lady, very opinionated. She'll be there to um, get as much help that she possibly can because she's got a voice for Sean. Sean is crazy as well, very much like his mum, great little mover, um, good little dancer. Fifi and Sean are always on Fortnite together. Um, and it, it's good that they've both got each other, but also it's good that Sean's got a really good close-knit um, friends and family around him that can help him. And also so is Joe. And, um, you know, when Joe first told me about Sean a few years ago, I said, you know, we need to do something um, for him and raise awareness. And she was like, oh, people don't do that for me, you know. Um, Sean ain't that bad. You know, as, as though there was always somebody worse off than, than Sean. Um, but at the end of the day, like I said to her, but Sean is your son and that one day he might need that help and one day it might be too late. So we need to get in there quicker. And I think that's when you then came on board, Kaz. And, um, yeah. Said, right, let's get going. Next thing you know, I was away on holiday or something. <laughs> in inboxes because, okay, this has happened. We're now the charity warriors. And, okay, Sam would be back in a couple of weeks and she'd be back on board. And that's where we've got. And um, it's gone pretty crazy. And then, obviously, asking the guys to come on in and help as well. Yeah. Um, is, you know, especially with the first event for it, I think it's going to be amazing. And I can't thank them enough as well for stepping on board. Yeah, we do really appreciate you coming in to help us, guys. We really do. Oh, now, sorry, you're going to have to buy a hoodie now and join us on all the other events. <laughs> do you know what, guys? Yeah. We actually, Ashley, you have a job to do right at this moment in time. Because guess yeah. who is in the chat room? Oh. We've got Ashley's, chat room. Ashley's Ashets. Show them all the Ashes <laughs> assets. <laughs> and the hey, hey, hey. <laughs> so you have to see uh, the of them. <laughs> thank you guys for the support. You've literally got red I am. If I were to video right now, my head looks That was my psychic ability going through the lines then. <laughs> literally, Ashley yeah. has his own little following on Twitter called Ashley's Ashets. And they're in the chat room. That's really nice. <laughs> I don't think it is. I keep saying that Ash is his alter ego and he's typing his uh, tweets himself. <laughs> yeah, what? Well, yeah. I said that as well. <laughs> someone, uh, I think someone stated it as, like, 
the Smurfs and the Smurfettes. I don't really. I think it was something. I think it was along them lines. Do you know what? I think it's cute. I think it's, it's lovely. lovely. <laughs> right. I appreciate all the support. They're great. Um, someone made a comment the other day, and it wasn't a negative one, but it could have yeah. come across that way if it, if it was read wrongly and everyone just jumped the gun. I was like, whoa, whoa, guys, it's a misunderstanding. Calm down. Like, everyone was going crazy, just jumping back for you know for not like, to su- to support me. So I really respect that, and um, yeah, I appreciate it. It's, it's it's a nice, it is a nice thing. It's we all say hi to Paula because they say hi to Paula. That's Ashley Paula. Sashets is Paula. Hey, Paula. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll say hello to Pam. Pam. If, Pam, if Pam's listening, I'll say hello to Pam as Pam's not been well. She's been in the hospital. Oh, um, okay. Right, guys, yeah. you have actually a serious question in the chat room. I'm going to switch it up this time. I'm going to start with Ashley. Um, have you ever been to a location where you have been that scared you refused to go back? <laughs> Not, Not, I've, I've never, never been, been I've, 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 I've never, never left the location because and refused to go back, back ever. ever. Um, yeah. I'd always yeah. want to go back and find, you know, find out. If something made me feel that way, I'd want to know what it was, so I'd have to go back. Um, but I did actually leave location last week, and it's one I go to all the time. All the time. Um, a few weeks back, sorry, and I left, I just had to leave. I'd, um, I, I witnessed something, um, and yeah, it really affected me. I couldn't actually continue, so I unfortunately had to leave the guys and leave the public and um, head home. Wow. But obviously, I'm back, I'm back there this Saturday. I, I go there all the time. That's like our, our main home hub, and that's the health of our caves. What about you, Sam? Well, funny enough, that's what I was about to say, to say then. I was just about to interrupt. Um, yeah. I would never be scared of anything, Um and I'd always confront anything I thought that scared me. But I have to say, um, I think I was actually with Ash and Barry once and um, something happened at the Hellfire and it actually really made me be physically sick um, to the point being I had to go home. Oh, yes. I think I was there with you, Barry, wasn't I? Yeah, that's right, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and that's never happened, but it was just a weird... I think a lot of people that particular night was having really weird experiences. I can't even describe it because I've not felt that before. And obviously in all the years of um, doing the hunts and, um, for, you know, over 30 years, I've never experienced that. Um, but I wouldn't run just for the fact of being of where I live. So my house, I think, is a lot more haunted than most venues. So I <laughs> run. I have to, you know, I think I'm rocky sometimes. <laughs> What about you, Barry? Have you ever been that scared of a, when you went into a location you wouldn't go back to it? Uh, yeah, I mean, I've investigated hundreds and hundreds of places across the world now, and um, uh, during filming of Help My House, um, we visited 39 De Grey Street in Hull. Yeah. Now, I'd never been there before. A lot of rumours to say it is one of the most haunted places in England. Some people say, no, there's nothing there at all. I can tell you now, it is haunted. And, and it's, it's haunted by things, things that are inhuman. And I and it, it affected me in a way that I don't ever wish to be affected before. And to give some clarity on that, it yeah. kind of it kind of felt like I had just been told my kids, everyone, they're all dead. It was like grief. It, it was something that overwhelmed me to the point where you don't get to see it all on television, but, you know, I, I walked yeah. out there and I was crying. You know, I had tears running down my cheeks. It was that, it was that intense. And, it, and I wouldn't say it was fear that made me leave and fear that prevented me from going back. It's a feeling of dread, and I just can't bring myself to voluntarily go and do that again. So, listen, if UK TV are listening to this, do not send me back there on the next season. I'm not doing it. Um, <laughs> It, it, it's not going to happen. Um, I want to go to those places. See, I've done it. I know what Barry is like. I was actually having this chat with Kaz before we came on air yeah. about the Grey Street. And um, I said to Kaz, to me, there was nothing there, but there was the one room that was very uncomfortable and a weird feeling about, could it be something there that, you know, that just didn't come out that night? Possibly. Um, but for me on that night that I went, No. But well, it's like it's every venue is different, isn't it? Every time you go. Yes, every time you go, it's different. 
Yeah. yeah. And they also, the spirits, the spirits are responding to people's energy, energy whether they they want to come out, they want to interact or not. In this particular instance, the multiple energies made themselves present and they weren't all human. And the mm-hmm. things that the things that were inhuman, and we could, you know, I'm not going to even give them a name right now, but they, these things were the things that it induced that sense of dread and fear and loathing into me. And it affected me for a while. Not, I wouldn't say a spiritual attachment, but it was a kind of a feeling that stayed with me for the duration of that filming block. And it, and it messed me up, it really did. Wow. Don't you find, though, guys, this is the thing. Right, you've all worked, obviously, Barry, you're working on Help My House is Haunted. And mm-hmm. Sam and Ashley, you have both worked on Celebrity Ghost Hunt Live. You yes. don't get to see everything that goes on. Don't, don't you find that quite frustrating? Because things have obviously happened to you at that location that will get edited out because they've got to shrink it down. A That's because it's entertainment purposes only, though, isn't it? They're only allowed to give you the entertainment. They're not allowed to give you all the boring bits and all the overwhelming scare factors. They're not allowed. Well, they left loads and loads out on the cutting room floor. I mean, we filmed, you know, we're talking 15, 20 hours of footage and you shrink it down in a 47-minute programme. And, you know, there are bits of evidence that were left out that obviously my team and my my close friends have been privileged to have heard and seen. And some of that stuff is mind-blowing. I mean, Ash, you'd agree, wouldn't you? Some of the EVPs. Oh, okay. I remember, what was it, two years now you filmed that? Yeah, yeah. Remember you... Stand to me like literally next morning when he was on the phone. And I listened to it and it was. It was and then like again, like you said, I never made the edit and that was intense. This is the thing, I mean right, so with Celebrity Ghost Hunt, Ashley. Yeah. What was your favourite location? On the the Season one or season two or season two. Or Season, season two, two. Um, the most recent one. Season two. Loftus Hall. Hall. Really? Yeah, Loftus Hall in Ireland. That was my favourite location. Yeah? Yeah. What did you yeah, enjoy um, about it most? Well, the fact that my nan used to tell me that story when I was younger. The really? notorious story. The hooved sailor who decided to have a passionate time with the daughter of the house. So I heard that story and then sitting down in the room where apparently this happened and, you know, he escaped up through the ceiling and then she died in a fetal position waiting for his return, looking at the window. Wow. It was all just, it was just insane hearing it all first hand from his story and being in that place, which I knew of growing up, you know, my nan used to tell us all the story and I'm, I'm sure a lot of people around the world have actually heard of the story. Um, and, yeah, again, like you said, you know, things that don't make the edit, um, they allowed me to go off. I went off for about half an hour, 45 minutes with a camera on my own, just exploring. Yeah. And I experienced some stuff, you know, I picked up a few things. And, um, you know, me and the sound, man, we, call, we see a shadow figure come behind myself. But, you know, as Baz said, like, if you're filming, you know, we're filming, you know, 10 to 12 hours. And to go into a 44-minute episode, which on my side of things was celeb-based, um, you know, it's more of the reality stars' reaction and how they act to things. So it is hard to work that way. But that was my favourite location. In, yeah, definitely my favourite location across both seasons, to be fair. That was my favourite. Now, Barry, Help My House is Haunted. Yeah. Now, I've watched most of them. I've watched, I think, basically all. I think I missed one. I think yeah, I missed yeah. one. But what was your favourite? Amongst all of the ones you went to, what was your favourite? I think my, there's two different things. My favourite location, favorite location and, the and the place that, that I think is the best, best, if you know what I mean. Um, I say the favourite location was probably um, Chillingham Castle in Northumberland. It's beautiful, it's gothic, it's massive, and it's teeming with different energy levels. And there's so many things that... We missed, you know, um, and I want to go back there definitely. But I, I, my favourite location in terms of paranormal evidence and stuff was the Skirid Inn. It was brilliant, absolutely amazing place. I was going to say that to you when I watched it. That was my favourite. 
the skewing. There was a lot that you didn't see, but we've got a lot of evidence there, and not just the singing. And now I don't do that often. I'm not. I'm not singing out song again. Um, but the but the EVPs we caught, the clarity of some of them, the responses that we got with the spirit box, um, the fact that something bashed on that cupboard door, and they always seem to throw me into cupboards or dungeons or basements or cellars or attics, and that uh, I'm used to it now. But um, but but that that was intense and it was real, one hundred percent genuine. I mean, it, some of the stuff was just inexplicable. Wow. What about you, Sam? Do you have a favourite location you've been to so far? I think you've been everywhere, Sam. I've been everywhere. And I'm a bit like Barry, really. Um, <laughs> um, Grandon Hall, I love, but I have to back Barry on the skewing. And I said to Barry before he even went to the skewing, if he ever got to go there, it was amazing because of. Um, Obviously, years ago, I still help them out now and again, but another paranormal company, um, I help out a lot, hire that venue. Mm -hmm. And um, we were in the little back rooms. You have to go through the bar around under the archway into the back. And next to where that archway is, is a big high, I'd say it's about five foot high, wooden arch chair. I don't know if Barry can recall that. Yeah, Um, we was in that room and we was doing table tipping with it in there at the particular time was a seven foot solid oak table that was um we was doing table tipping and there was another medium a welsh guy who wanted to work for the company um and so he was being like doing a trial run with us and me and my friend Yvonne was like okay if there's anybody really here you're gonna you know scare the living daylights out of us we want something some real solid evidence and um we was really, really going through with this table tip. And next thing you know, the table, this seven-foot table, pinned this guy up against the fireplace. Wow. And then we heard dragging. And the only other group was upstairs. And um, we heard this dragging. So we was like, okay, what's that? Turn torches on. And the archway was blocked by this chair. So I've had to climb over the bar to make sure no one was in the other side of the bar. And there wasn't. And we went upstairs. And um, as we were walking up the stairs... Somebody from the other team was coming down to ask us ask if we'd been dragging anything. Um, Yeah, so we've got got in. So that was the only, out of all the venues that I've done, other than Grendon Hall, um, I do like Hellfire as well, though. Um, That was, I have to say, my number one, especially for what you would call poltergeist activity. Definitely. But my number one is my home. I just have to leave that as that. <laughs> Larry needs a whole program next time. <laughs> yeah. Ashley, um, the ash outs are out in force. So can yeah. you please shout hello to Scarlett and Gillian or I'm going to be in trouble. Jill, is it? And Scott? Yeah. yeah. Hi, Jill. Um, I hope you're well. Uh, Jill, Jill Steps. And you're recovering from your kidney transplant. And... I believe you have a cold, so I hope you're recovering from a cold. And hello to you guys. Thank you for tuning in and listening to um, Barry, Sam, and myself. Um, the other question we have in the chat room. Oh, this is a good one, actually. Someone jumped in before I could. <laughs> if you have a location abroad that you would love to do, where would it be and why? And I'll start with Barry. I need to start with me. That's psychic sense. <laughs> it is. It is a tricky one. There's so many different places um, across the whole world that I'd love to investigate. I think um, it's going to be in America, and it's probably the Myrtles Plantation or um, Waverly Hills Sanatorium, which I've never been to. Um, and uh, yeah, they're on my bucket list. And I'll be doing those definitely. I actually looked at Waverly Hills myself, Barry. Any good? I actually, I want to go, and I spoke to the owner of it, and I'm just sort of going, well, will I go, will I not go? <laughs> but I think I'm going to have to go at some point. Um, what about you, Ashley? Uh, it's a hard one. It is a hard one. I mean, again, I think it would be America again. Yeah. Um, so maybe Eastern State Penitent- uh, Penitentiary. I like it. Yeah. That's, you've got a lot of history behind it. Um, or the mystery house I think it's Winchester's mystery house the woman just kept building she just kept adding I think you would get lost Um, I think that's in California you would get lost say that again sorry you would get lost in that house yeah I mean she just kept adding (laughs) adding adding. 
but yeah, yeah I think them two. Obviously, you got the Hamilton people and things like that. But I'm, I've always been interested by them two places. What about you, Sam? Um, I've got two. Um, one is obviously um, Auschwitz. Yeah, a lot of people wouldn't agree, agree in that, but I've just, just got this connection, connection um, with the wars, and I don't know. I've always had been drawn to it since a child, so I know you can't ever do anything there. But my dream is to still go there with an EVP quietly in my in my pocket as I walk around. Um, <laughs> Yeah, and hopefully I might get that done sooner rather than later. Um, and the other one, I mean, I don't know why everyone is drawn to America um, because obviously their history isn't as big as the UK and other places. But I do want to do Alcatraz as well, um, another place that I've always wanted to do. So, um... All the girls in the chat room are saying Alcatraz. <laughs> <laughs> are they? I'm not even in the chat room. See, that's the psychic feeling with us all. But, you know... Um, I think at the end of, end of the day, I don't know, Europe's got a massive history, Europe, and um, yeah. I think Europe would definitely be made for me more than America. Well, but. this is the thing, guys. I mean, we all have families, and we all go away on holidays and things. So I'm going to start with Sam for this one. Have mm-hmm. you ever actually gone on holiday and ended up investigating? All the time. <laughs> <laughs> All the time, wherever I go, wherever I go. And obviously, um, even if I just go out to new places in the UK and, you know, just for for dinner or something with new people and they find out what I do, you end up doing something. So you don't ever really um, get out of it. But, yeah, no, everywhere. But it's like I want to buy a chateau in France. I'm desperate. I am already looking for a chateau in France that I'd like to buy. But also, yeah, yeah, we've, we've viewed a few already, but I've not found the exact one yet. I know what I want. Um, it's got to be able to cater for my weekends, but it's also got to be a business as well, um, like just a normal, just to, so that we can survive as well. Um, but my husband also wants a fishery, so we've got to look for the all three. Um, but that will, that is my future plans. I can have a chateau. I'm going to buy a chateau, which I'm going to hire to people like GPS. Yeah. <laughs> and myself. Don't forget me. Um, yeah, but um, I do. That's what I want. That's my my dream. What about you, Ashley? What's that? Sorry, my dream. <laughs> He's not looking for the sleep. Literally, <laughs> going anywhere, anywhere in the world apart from the USA. Let's discuss oh, the USA. I thought it was following on from dreams, like with Sam's Sam France. <laughs> um, no, because I said that's where I, I go. I mean, there's an old derelict um, place that we go to in France, so, yeah. <laughs> really? I actually went to Chateau in France. Yeah. I can't remember the life of the name of them. I've never but, been to France. How weird uh, is that? Well, I've never left the country. Uh, well, actually, it's like once I left the country before I went on <laughs> the uh, haunted holiday with Celebrity Ghost Hunt. So it was all new to me. I went on a plane once in, like, 25 years, and next week I'm on, like, three, eight, three different countries in, like, two weeks. Um, but I think Sam's right. I think Europe, definitely. Somewhere in Europe. Um, Europe I've heard Prague. Would be good. It would... Uh, Amsterdam, I would like to do Amsterdam. Oh, Amsterdam. Love... See, Amsterdam would be amazing. Amazing. I've heard that that's really active. It is brilliant. It's brilliant. Right, guys, this might not be a popular question, um, but I've got to ask it. It's in the chat. Well, I don't need to ask it, but I'm going to ask it. <laughs> A lady in the chat room has asked, have you ever been to a location, Gemma Banks is asking, have you ever been to a location where someone has faked stuff? Yes. Yeah. 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 How do you deal with that? You ask them to step off whatever they're faking. Say, for example, they're on a Ouija board and you feel that they're pushing that Ouija board, you ask them to come up, come off because other people have paid to go on that Ouija board. Yeah. Um, so if somebody's going to fake, let's see. Let's, you know, you, you do it politely, obviously. Um, we say, hang on a sec, could we just take you off a second, see if it's still going? And if it, you know, if it don't go, you kind of know. Um, if somebody's all of a sudden being possessed, let's go and have a cup of tea and a bit of chocolate and take them away from the event and see how they react. Um that obviously usually grounds them anyway. And two, they kind of realise, hang on, am I being It's <laughs> true. Do you know what springs to mind? And I think it was actually, yeah. I think the three of us were actually on the one investigation together. Yeah. <laughs> if it's what I think you're thinking about, Sam, I'm sure it was what I was, I was thinking of. 
um, yeah. where we held a massive, a massive, massive uh, circle. circle. Yeah. And, uh, like in hall. Yeah. And uh, so someone, someone kind of started, started twisting around and claimed his arms were being twisted. Is that the first thing you're supposed to mind? That's said that I have witnessed it. <laughs> yeah, there's quite a few. You do get quite a few, but yeah. <laughs> I have actually been at a location where somebody was throwing two pence coins. Oh, God. Behind them to make a noise. <laughs> I mean, don't the case we throw stones, but that's because that's like a trigger object um, for see the history there. Um, but yeah, it's just I, I, I think it's pointless. What, what the, you know, you're letting everyone down. You're letting yourself down. The thing is, if somebody's going to fake something, and we had something that we thought was real, yeah. then we have to disregard that because you know, if there, if you catch a faker amongst the mists of some amazing activity, well, sorry, I will wipe all of that clean and say everything we had was faked. Yeah, it's um, and one thing I do, and also Barry's team and Ash does as well, is before we start, we actually say, you know, guys, this is your event. We're here to train you um, tonight. But what we don't do is fake. And what we ask you more than anything is to do the same. Even if you jumped out on your friend to go boo, that to us is faking. And that to us, OK, we've seen you do that. Are you going to be doing that throughout the whole night? It's, it's not, not for that fair on those that have paid and those that are looking for, um, you know, real evidence. Yeah, that is true. I mean, it's it's not fair. I mean, Barry, what's your thoughts on this? No, I They're agree not... with everything that's been said. I mean, we've had experiences of you know, members of the public messing around and that kind of stuff. Luckily, you know, the team I work with and the people I've worked with um, they are all brilliant and they have integrity and our credibility is on the line. So everything we do, you know, has a ripple effect and um, whether that's on or off the camera. Um, and it's important that people understand what it is we we're trying to achieve by doing this um, the right way and take things seriously whilst having fun. I mean, it's, you know, that, that, that is key as well, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. The but thing that's is, the thing Barry said, you know, yeah. Barry's built a company for 20 years, yeah. and that one person that could knock that for Barry, it, it, you know, it's heartbreaking to think that people can do that, but some people would listen and believe that that faker was, te- you know, doing, being truthful, and it, 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 it's wrong. People need to remember, you know, okay, we're going on to this investigation tonight. We need to be 200% true to ourselves. <laughs> Yep, this is the thing, there's been a massive boom in paranormal groups and investigators mm-hmm. and it seems to be absolutely everywhere, well maybe that's just my little world, but it seems to be absolutely everywhere at the moment. Um, do you find it makes it more difficult because they're all doing it for different reasons and it's all a bit of a mishmash. You've got people who want to do it for money. You've got people who are doing it for the beliefs. You've got people who are doing it. It's very difficult now for paranormal investigators to be taken seriously. That's a controversial kind of question, isn't it? We're all yes. going to have, you know, different opinions. I'm going to be, you know, as blunt, yeah. straight to the point. Yeah, of course. There are lots, there are lots and lots of people out there that want to experience things that might have been on public ghost hunting events with companies, that kind of thing, and they decide, oh, well, I'm going to go do this myself. And that's absolutely fine. Yeah. You know, there, but there are thousands and thousands of these groups, and they think that by delivering a few ghost hunts, you know, in their local pubs and local haunts, they're going to make money and become a professional outfit. It takes years of dedication and research um, and you know, personal experiences. But having said that, Everybody has to start somewhere. I did, you know, Sam did, Ash did. You know, you all start somewhere. And and, and the very fact of, of, you know, making TV programs and this, that, the other doesn't make you any better, any more professional than the next person. It's, you know, it's a lucky break. It's just hard work pays off, it pays dividends in the end, that kind of thing. You've got to understand, though, the people that are doing this, there are people out there that just want to make money and they don't care about anything else. They just think, you know, this is great. Look at me, I'm, I'm, I'm a ghost hunter. It's, it's not like that for most people. I think the, the industry has been tarnished over the years by very, very 
unscrupulous kind of individuals and teams messing around and fleecing and conning people. And I've seen I've seen the bullshit. I'm sorry, but, you know, I've seen it firsthand, and it does keep me hidden. You know, um, and, I think, and, and we're, we're all there for the right reasons. Well, us three anyway. And there are lots and lots of people out there that I genuinely respect within this field. And I've got plenty of time for. When I don't have time for you, I don't talk to you. That's as simple as that. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> this is the thing, isn't it, Sam? It's we have been in this for years and years and years. Mm-hmm. It isn't something that's happened overnight. It's something that we will. What I have found, when I've looked at it, most people have had an experience in their childhood. Yeah. And that's what started it. And it's never left them. Yeah. It's not just that. You also find, I mean, it's like everyone says it's a gift. It's not a gift. We've all got it. We've all got it. And, you know, under the age of five, we are so aware of all our senses. You know, we're not worrying about bills and um you know what's going to happen tomorrow we're just worrying about getting up in the morning making sure we've got some some sweets and a bit of breakfast or whatever and ready for the day yeah. and then you, know, you get into your childhood of ages five to 16 and then you're being drummed with the alphabet and learning and maths and then you're the adult you know and you're paying the bills and a lot of people's senses disappear because their life becomes stressed um you know, but some, like myself and Barry as well, you know, from a very young age, we've kept it. Yeah. And then what you find is, you know, if you haven't kept it from that young age, you find that when somebody then loses a loved one and they become in, go into that dark place of mourning, that all of a sudden they're sensing again because they are wanting, they are looking, they're reaching out for that loved one to give them that sign that they've, they've got to the other side safely. And all of a sudden their abilities pick up again. And that's when you get that 20 year old or that 30 year old or 40 50 year old you know all of a sudden wanting to join a circle because that's sensing or they've seen somebody in their room or they felt their nan or their mum come through you know and that's what it is so you need, it's it's not no gift it isn't a gift we've all got it it's about working with it and using it to our best of our abilities and it comes at all different times for everybody well this is the thing we've all got kids all four of us have got kids yeah. So, Ashley, if you noticed you, your kids have randomly been speaking to thin air or just something uh, that you've went, you went, um, what was that? <laughs> my son, Do you know what I mean? My son. Yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. yeah, even now, you know, in his sister's room, um, he said that, you know, he, used to, he can hear things through the, um, through the baby monitor and things like that. Yeah. Um, you know, so I, I do believe that he has something, and obviously, I, th- I you know, I, I, mean, I think I've spoken with this to Sam beforehand, um, and obviously other people I work with, he's, I don't know, there's this, you know, there's something about him which I think he's got a lot of passion into it, uh, like a huge amount of passion, you know, I mean, he's, yeah. he, for his birthday, he's asking for voice recorders, he's asking for red really? bottles. You know? <laughs> oh. he's, six, he's six years old. Oh, yeah, but that's what I know, Ash. Always, uh, doing the Ouija board with me when I'm doing doors, you yeah, know. that's what I mean. He's just, you know, so he's under condition he can have a voice recorder, but he can't call anything out unless I'm there. Oh, uh, okay. What you about know? you, Bam? But yeah, he loves it. I've got seven little girls at home, yeah, and um, uh, wow. <laughs> about an hour ago, before the before the show started, um, we were sitting there having having dinner, and uh, Kia, who's the oldest, she's sixteen in a few weeks' time, and her birthday is the day after Halloween. Now she said, and she told myself, she told my wife Lucy, she told her sisters to some extent. I'm not, I'm not sure all of it. That every single year something strange happens to her on Halloween night at midnight when it turns her birthday, um, and and it's um yeah it's, it's interesting because hold on one second oh I'm being flagged down Lucy's hold on one second okay <laughs> oh dear all oh, right um. the um sorry what was I going to say so Kia's has actually said to us that um the her bed has shaken, and while she's been putting me on, her bed has been shaking, and 
Um, she's seen shadow figures in a room and a name being called and all that kind of stuff. And it is very, very strange because she's kind of experiencing things that I did as a kid as she's growing up. She's, she's not scared. She's inquisitive, but she wants to know more. And the others have all said that they've experienced strange things as well, but not saying not all the time in the house. It's not like our house is you know, haunted as, as such. But um, I think that they are just in tune. They're just sensitive and they're able to pick up on these things. And I, I, given the job that I do and the fact that, you know, my wife is, is very sensitive as well. Um, you know, I think that they're, not, you know, they're, they're going to experience stuff. Do you think it will be quite interesting, though, as they grow up? Do you think they might follow in your footsteps, Barry? I don't know, you know, it'd be nice to think of maybe they can take over running GPS one day, but <laughs> it's one of those things, it's, um, it's not for everyone, is it, you know, and um, you know, a couple of them, I think Ella and Freya have, have shown a little bit more interest in it and uh, are kind of more, they're keen to learn more and find out more, uh, but if anyone, I think Kia, the oldest one, is going to kind of, you know, she's actually, Kia's coming on her first ghost hunt with me uh, at Kelvin and Bunker next month. Um, really? I'm taking her, yeah, I'm taking her and her boyfriend, and she's going to be 16. I said, no, you're with me. It's fine. You can do that. Um, I'll look after her. But um, she's not scared. She's really excited. So uh, let's see how it goes. Oh, that'd be interesting. You need to let us know what happens with that. <laughs> yeah, I will do. you find you've got an investigator in training. <laughs> what about... I'm going to give her some responsibility, see how it prepares. <laughs> that's a good plan <laughs> my daughter's actually an investigator she's 19 but she's investigated East Drive with me she's been to Degray Street with me she's been to Pendle Hill um, but she's been doing that with me since she was 17 so I think it depends on the child yeah it does yeah. That, that's the way I look at it what about you Sam have you noticed that with your girls um, yeah, all of mine and my son. Um, yeah. My eldest is 25 and my youngest is four. Yeah. Uh, the 25-year-old went from, as well, as I said, my house is very, very haunted and we've they've witnessed stuff and experienced stuff um, that many kids of their age wouldn't ever experience. So she's dead against it and don't ever want to do it. Um, my 22-year-old, she's... Um, very aware, very much like me, is our Kiki, um, but it absolutely petrifies her, so she keeps away from it. Then my 21-year-old, for her 13th birthday, she um, spent it at Boldbrook Castle um, running a group um, and doing some transfiguration. Wow. <laughs> yeah, so um, she obviously did it and loved it. And then my 19-year-old, she's part of my team, and she's been with us um, for quite some time, but obviously she's in France at the moment. Um, but she hopefully will be back soon to come do some events before she goes somewhere else. Then I've got my son, who's nearly 17. Um, he's part of my team as well. He's seen and sensed all the time. My 11-year-old, obviously, she is so eager to come on the events, but you can't take her because obviously she's 11. So we yeah. do lots of things at home. So that's when my four-year-old gets involved as well. We do lots of investigations at home, using Aww. the EAP, using equipment, using the Ouija board, and they've all been on it. They've all been on it. Um, wow. Some people might say that that's wrong and I'm a bad mother, but at the end of the day, I've done it around them their whole life. I've not kept anything away from them. And, you know, it's no different to me being a hairdresser. And if that's what my children are brought up with, then that's what they're brought up with. And, you know, they, yeah, they've been scared. They see things. Blousey, bless her, she's, she's the four-year-old. She says that um, the shadow people were coming for her most nights. Um, Fifi used to have a, a, a friend called Melissa. Mm -hmm. And she used to say, Mum, Melissa won't come downstairs. Tell her to come downstairs. And I'd say, Melissa, come downstairs. And she went, oh, she ain't going to listen to you, is she? She's dead. You know, and be like that. Um Kai's, you know, the amount of things that have happened in this house, you know, every single one of them seen and sensed and felt and, you know, even me, me, my 19-year-old, the one that's on my team now, she had her birthday at Hellfire Caves. Well, but, this, um, this is the thing. I mean, I've never kept anything from my kids. Um, yeah. I have two Wiccans. Yeah. <laughs> I have two Wiccans. I have a sceptic. I have a sensitive and I have a paranormal investigator. Brilliant. But Love they've it. all got to follow their own path. So, but it's quite interesting because I'm convinced it runs in families, you know. 
But like I said, we've all got it. We've all got it. And it's whether or not you choose to use it. And it's like, as my older two are like, no way. They don't want to use it. They go away. But Kiki, the second eldest, she could she could read your future, your life, and it's absolutely amazing. Yeah. Absolutely amazing. Yeah. Fifi, my 11-year-old, has been doing tarot readings since from the age of seven. So she's already, what, into, she's just about to turn 12, so nearly five years into being a tarot reader, which was younger than when I started. I was 13 when I started tarot reading. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, they've got it. They've, you know, they've not got the gift. They've just got it, and they're just practising it at their own time, at their own pace, and if they decide one day it's not for them, then so be it. And I have to agree with Barry. Kia is so excited about going to Kelvin because she even asked if I was coming. She's like, oh, Sam, I'm so excited. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, she is. <laughs> right, this is the thing. Guys, I want to concentrate on you one by one because I want to find out what's coming up. And Barry... Mm. It was actually announced last week that you're going to be a guest speaker at Sage. I am, yeah. I'm going to be there from the 8th to the 11th of November, um, giving a talk um, on Help My House Tall Tears, working behind the scenes on television, that kind of thing. Um, and uh, I'll be with Chris Fleming, my buddy from, uh, from the show as well. Are you looking forward to that? I am, I am. I'm really excited. It was, it was nice. It was a nice surprise to be invited this year. It was kind of mooted that I'd be there definitely for next year, um, given that the series was still running. But um, a couple of people dropped out last minute, and um, an MJ said, "Barry, uh, can you come on this year as well?" I said, yeah, "Why not? Let's do it." Um, I think it'll be brilliant. I, I'll get to meet you know so many different fans and, and people that are interested in the paranormal. Plus, I'm investigating Coombe Abbey on the first night, which is going to be brilliant. Yes, yes, you know. Do you know what, Barry? Do you want a surprise? Mm, go for it. You're going to meet me and Claire Hinks as well because we're going to. <laughs> awesome stuff. Right, so we'll get, so we get to investigate together. together. That'd be great. Yeah, <laughs> but I'm working. So. <laughs> <laughs> but oh, I mean. It's going, be, Sage, it's going to be an awesome experience. Sage is one of those paracons that is quite small. Mm. It's quite exclusive, isn't it? So it's, it's kind of like a smaller group. But it's, I think it'll be really good. I think it's going to be really good that whole weekend. I think so. I mean, I've never been there before. I've never done Sage Paracon and um, uh, I've never attended as a guest. Um, and, and to be invited there this year has just been phenomenal. You know, hopefully, fingers crossed, um, that, um, you know, it's the start of, uh, start of more um, different Paracons and conventions around the world. Watch this. Next year, you're both in the USA. I think so. <laughs> I think you will. <laughs> but what else have you got coming up, Barry, besides Sage? Well, um, I filmed something early on in the year that will be aired on PIC. Uh, it's called World's Scariest Ghosts. Um, and this will be, yeah, I think this is coming out, must be airing this end of this month or November. Uh, it's a 10-part series where I was a, just a series expert on each of the episodes. Um, and then I'm working on something which is kind of like the top secret at the moment, but it's, uh, it's again for UK TV. Um, so, uh, and, and fingers crossed that'll be out next year. Plus, uh, um, keep your eyes peeled for maybe announcements on Help My House is Haunted. Wow. You're going to be kept very busy. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's, going to be, it's going to be fun. It's going to be a ride. <laughs> Ashley, what is coming up for you? Uh, what do I have? Uh, so Saturday, um, I'm leading on, on the global event for Hearts Make Some Noise um, at Hellfire Caves um, with a few celebrity friends that are coming down. Um, after that, I am in Burton on Trent, uh, work alongside Wednesday Paranormal and Spectre. Um, they've put me up for uh, almost like a charity event to sleep in a haunted hotel on my own for the evening. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. Apparently, this room is known to have, you know, poltergeist activity. And, wow. You know, so that's the room, of course, which I'm sleeping in. So I'll be going live and setting up cameras throughout the night once I'm in there, once it's lockdown time. Um, I've been well, talking to... Well, you can't with... run out of there screaming if anything happens. You know uh, that, I don't right? run from nothing. I don't run from nothing. Good except man. for one time. <laughs> I, I, I tripped over a teddy bear. <laughs> but, um... Yeah, I've, uh, I've, I've been in talks with, um, uh, so I've had a meeting with a producer about an idea that I've had. So I'm mm -hmm. hoping that's going into next steps, which is we'll be meeting up again soon in a few weeks. 
Um, and then, yeah, just, you know, building on, obviously, on, on my YouTube channel and filming all events with GPS. Um, listening out for, obviously, a season three, if there is one of Ghost Hunt, Celebrity Ghost Hunt. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, mainly just still trying to just build... Um, you know, just just build a big paramount unity to to gain tangible evidence for everyone. You know, just cancelling out all the jealousy and all the hate. Things like I, th- that. I, I think there needs to be a series three of Celebrity Ghost Hunt. There has Thank to you. be because it's very popular. It is. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's my ideal way of investigating. Yeah. Um, you know, of course, I'm I'm very serious. I, I tend not to run around or have to deal with members of the public running around in fluffy coats and heels and normally wear sensible footwear <laughs> and sensible clothing. Um, you know, you and that's just that's, that's just the guys. That's just the guys on the show. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, yeah, but no, yeah, I've I've had comments that I stand there looking, you know, like Ryder's bodyguard and things like that. That's. Um, but I don't know if you noticed in some of them. I just people run. I just I'm like, yeah, just give me the camera, man. Just let me go. And I'm concentrating. <laughs> I, t- I think I have a paranormal investigating face where I, I tend to look really, really, really. You like off. that many hunt, though, yeah. aren't you? That that's yeah. just dash. So I can get very hacked <laughs> off, but I'm not. I just have a raise of an eyebrow and I'm listening. I, t- I tend to hear a lot of things. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I just kind of concentrate as much as I can. But unfortunately, concentrating is like a rich, a resting bitch face. Um, so, you know, <laughs> it can come across quite rude and abrupt, but no, I do take it as serious as I can. As well, obviously, we do have laughs at times. You know, it's it's good, it's good energy, um, especially before and after the breaks. You know, you, you notice a big change in in uh, audio if you're investigating before a tea break as opposed to after a tea break when people have eaten. There's a huge difference. Yeah. Um, Sam and Barry can vouch for a lot of grumbling stomachs and things like that, oh, which yeah. obviously oh, yeah. gives good energy, gives good vibes. People laugh, so it's it's a good thing. Yeah, you've got to have a laugh sometimes. I mean, oh, you have to serious all the time. <laughs> right, guys, brace yourself. Right, Sam, what have you got coming up? The reason I'm saying that is because I know what she's got coming up. Yeah, um, well, obviously, just the normal, really. Um, I'm not on the TV like these guys. I'm always in the background arranging big events. Um, So I'm back (laughs) at the the fabulous and amazing Hamwood Park House this Saturday. Um, Barry's also joining us there. Ashley obviously did the live there with us. Um, We're doing a lot of awareness into this house as well, trying to save it. Um, It's like a thousand-year history that is falling apart, really, falling down. Um, so we're there this Saturday. Then next weekend, I'm with the boys, um, Hellfire. Um, we're there doing the Double Dare. Mm-hmm. Then I've got a few mediumship nights popping in. And then the weekend that you're all off at stage, I would have come. But I'm at the School of Witchcraft in Colchester. So, um, yeah, I've got um, a weekend there, which is an amazing weekend. And we've not done this venue for the Witchcraft School, but we took it there due to the fact being lots of witches originated from Colchester and the area that we are staying in. So, But we also have a ghost hunt um, on the Saturday night there, and we're in the Red Lion Hotel, so we've actually got that there. And then on the 24th is our event for Sean and Lipodystrophy up at um, Resby. Mm -hmm. So we've got that coming. And then on the 8th, um, I'm joining Barry again to go to the Dolphin. That's the one I really liked on his TV programme that he did. Uh, So he's got an event there, so I'm off there to um, the Dolphin as well. And then I've got a mediumship night coming up in Essex, but the date's got to be confirmed because we're trying to obviously work around um, my daughter having... Um, my new grandchild um, who's popping out any time now and then obviously I've just been busy booking all the events for next year as well and obviously trying to do find some contacts for different venues for the Paranormal Charity Warriors because yeah. everyone seems to do the same things Thanks. and I think we need to find something different so I've got a list at the moment we actually had this conversation, didn't we, Sam, about thinking out of the box and yeah. doing things that are different from everybody else. So that's what we're looking for. Yeah, and then in between that, I've got to write, do me writing for Haunted Magazine and um, take a break. So, yeah, back to the drawing board. Do you actually <laughs> get time to eat? 
I don't really eat much, to be fair. <laughs> especially, yeah, I was Joan Lisa, Lisa especially, he tells me off because I always, always order much too much. Um, but yeah, no, I do. I have my moments. <laughs> Bless you. Right, guys, <laughs> this is probably going to put you on the spot. So I will apologise for that. Um, but I like to do this every now and again. So I'm going to put you on the spot. I'm going to start with Barry. Yeah. yeah. What's the funniest thing that's happened to you on a location? Oh, oh God, the funniest thing. thing. Yeah. <laughs> someone someone uh, letting one go during a very it's quiet not, moment. It's explicit. You're fine. You can see that. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. I, do you know what? I'm going to say it now. Like Chris, Chris Fleming farting. <laughs> 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 yeah, and uh, that, that, that will make the out, outtakes one day. Um, yeah, I, there's been some really funny moments. I mean, it's all sorts of things. Like, you know, I've, I've fallen over. I've literally fallen asleep and fallen over standing up. And um, it's uh, strange things like that. <laughs> Ashley. Oh Jesus! Oh, dear. <laughs> so I was so... at the cage in Saint Osage, and um, it was myself, Sean, and Amy, so two other team members, and we were live. Amy was live streaming on Facebook, and people were saying that there's a child spirit over in the cupboard. Mm-hmm. So I walked over there and I opened the door and you know called out, interacted, and things like that. And then basically Amy said I'll try and stay out of the shot on the way back. So I decided to, you know, take upon myself that I was like an SAS soldier and slide along the side of the wall. Not knowing that when I slid along the side of the wall, my training leg hit a teddy bear, which was sitting on a chair. <laughs> but it took me by surprise because it was delayed and it fell on the back of my leg. And my God, I, you know, I crossed the room like quick, very quick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I really did shit myself. Like, I'm not gonna lie. Um, I'm swearing online. I was like, people, I'm sorry. I'm swearing on Facebook Live. You know, my my kind of hips just thrusted forward and left my like my torso behind. Like, I was just really jumped up. But we had to stay. It wasn't paranormal. We went downstairs and checked because for those that have been at the cage, there's a huge TV downstairs when everything's filming. And we double checked, and it was confirmed that I did brush the teddy bear with my leg. Um, I think someone from the Daily Mail got involved. And, you know, kind of said, "Oh, red-faced ghost hunter scared by a teddy bear," and I kind of just called. Him out. I kind of called him out, saying, "You know, you're obviously really good at your job that you can see someone with a red face on a black and white video." Um, he didn't have much to say back to that because you know we stated it wasn't paranormal straight away. It was more of a funny thing. Um, and then I actually come across a video on YouTube, top ten ghost hunter pranks. And this this video put together by an American guy with all these, uh, you know, these crazy little ads. And you got a guy speaking like Siri, like paranormal investigator Ashley Black, and it was scared by a teddy bear. And there's all these like little in- intakes of like horror films, and you could see me just jumping across the. Uh... <laughs> but that's not like the, the top ten scares. I think it's had like over like half a million views on YouTube. Oh wow! Um, yeah, <laughs> I actually messaged Barry once about it. I sent it to the group. I was like, should I should I be getting something from this? Like you know, there's a lot of people laugh at my at my expense here. Um, <laughs> But yeah, that's the yeah that probably is the funniest thing. Um, oh, or yes. an ex team member, Paul. He used to be able to let out an almighty burp. I mean, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. This, this used to travel the caves <laughs> big time, and the Sam and Barry can vouch for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It. <laughs> it was, about... Yeah, it was horrendous. <laughs> what about you, Sam? Oh, it's very hard, isn't it, to think about the most, because you have so many, but do you know what, I have to say, it's not really on the paranormal side, but it was on a weekend that we did, and it was our last weekend that we did at Grendon Hall, and while we were just waiting for a guest, obviously, we, we had, it was a healing weekend that I did, and we'd had the paranormal night and everything, but during the week, weekend, we'd done lots of um, sound healing, so you're working with all your arms and your ooze and things like that, so I had all these guests sitting down waiting for us to do the next lesson. And I was waiting and waiting for these other people to come back into the room. And so while we was there, I ended up having like 30 guests singing a song that I was making up on the spot and I videoed it. And um, I did put it all over Facebook because it was absolutely hilarious. You had to be there with like them. But if you go to my Facebook, the video is actually there of all these guys doing it. And then I say something along the line, and this is how you get a group of women to add to Pratt or something. I don't know what it was that I said, but it was funny at the time. It doesn't sound funny now, but yeah. 
<laughs> but again, it does sound actually quite funny. In the chat room, it was funny. <laughs> right. Barry, if people want to follow your work and what you're doing, where would they go? Uh, all, uh, all over, over social media. media. I mean, yeah, um, at, at Barry Guy, Guy on Twitter, Twitter at, at official Barry Guy, Guy on Facebook, Facebook and, and Barry, Barry underscore Guy, Guy uh, uh, on, Instagram. on Instagram. Thank you. What about you, Ashley? Where would they follow you? Um, so you can follow me on Instagram, which is Ashley underscore Buckingham. Mm-hmm. Um, Twitter, which is um, at Ashley Bucks One. Or YouTube, which is called Into the Unknown. Thank you. Sam? Oh, my God. Okay, now you're going to ask me all my hashtags, yeah? No, I don't know them. Um, Twitter, I'm underscore psychic underscore Sam. Um, on Instagram, just psychic Sam. Uh, Paranormal Sisters, I'm under absolutely everything, if you name it. Um, I've got about six different groups on Facebook. Sam, ben- yeah. Sam Bennett Psychic Medium, Sam Bennett Spiritual Medium. Spiritually Connected, Paranormal Sisters, Paranormal Sister Events, Paranormal Charity Warriors. <laughs> the list is never ending. But, um, yeah, I think the main one that you'll find me on, really, to be fair, is my Twitter page, um, psychics un- underscore psychic underscore Sam or Sam Bennett Psychic Medium on Facebook. <laughs> Thank you. Do you know what, guys? It's been great speaking to you. We've been we went over the hours, so it's fine. Bosses won't mind. They gave me permission. It's all good. So, Reesby Abbey, that's the big thing we've got coming up with all yeah. four of us are going to be there, along with Joanne and Lisa and Caroline and Ness and obviously all our guests. Yeah. Um, but that's the most important thing that we are trying to drive across at the moment is to get some funds for Lepidistry for UK. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Barry and Ashley have been very kind and jumped in and helped us with this event, and we are really thankful for that. So thank you both. Definitely, definitely. Um, so please try and follow Paranormal Charity Warriors. See also, what's going on. can I can I yeah. say something guys, of before we all go? To anyone that's listening, if you can't afford to come onto the event and you want to donate a pound, please let us know or just join and um, contact Life of District for UK and donate a pound to them. Or if you've got any unwanted Christmas presents, birthday presents, Easter presents, you name it, anything you don't want that's still like brand new condition that you would like to give to a team member of the Paranormal Charity Warriors. We're trying to do a hamper as well for Christmas that we're going to raffle. Yeah. So this hamper, we're, it's, we want it to be as big as it possibly can, which, you know, could be a lot of Christmas presents, maybe to a family that can, can't afford um, to have a good Christmas, but all tickets are going to be mega cheap. Um, so we're asking any donations as well that we can possibly raffle off to raise money for this good cause. And also, out now in Love It magazine is Sean's story. So if anyone wants to go and buy Love It magazine or get it online, they will see Sean's story as well. So it yeah. gives them the background information. Yeah, exactly. And we have some amazing raffle prizes, don't we? Yeah. We have uh, rosary beads that have been made, handmade by Kerry Greenaway. Bless yeah. her. She made them with her own fair hands. What else do we have? We have a family ticket for Hellfire Caves. Okay, we've got some ghost hunting tickets. Yes. I can't remember who they are, but then for the hamper so far, we've got some smellies going in the hamper. We've got crystals. We've got two crystal hampers. Yeah, we've got crystal hampers. Yeah, so there's loads of things coming in. So Absolutely. I'll throw, I'll throw in a, 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 um, an official Ghost Final Paranormal Society t-shirt. I'll put one of them in there. Oh, Fabulous. Thank Cheers, you. Barry. Thank you, Barry. Thank you. Can you sign it as well? Yeah, of course can. I'll put a yeah. sharpie on there. <laughs> yeah, put a sharpie right. on there. They'd love that. Uh, but thank yeah. you so much for that. But we've got some amazing things going on. So please, if you can help in any way for Sean, for the other sufferers of lipodystrophy, we would really, really appreciate it. And guys, all I can say, it's been absolutely fantastic talking to three of you. Oh, thanks for having us. Thanks, thanks guys. And it's been lovely having Ashley's Ashettes in the chat room as well. Yeah. Uh, thank you. <laughs> They're a lovely bunch. They really are. Yeah, in the chat room. Yeah, there you go. I'll throw, I'll throw in and uh, I'll, I'll throw, I believe it's Ashettes t shirts. So I'll throw one of them in. Woo! Um, Woo! Have there an Ashettes t shirt. And Sam, I'll get you one. Don't worry, it's fine. Oh, cheers, babe. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to wear it. <laughs> 
Keep us warm. No, I don't want anyone there. So, guys, if you're willing, after we do Reesby Abbey, if you're willing to do another show, you can come back and do another show. Yeah, sounds good. Why not? Yeah. Yeah, Definitely. And tell everybody what went on. Which means we're not allowed to put it on social media, Sam. Sorry? We're not allowed to put it on social media. Okay. Well, we can, but you know what I mean. Yeah. Keep, keep no all the juicy goss up to the end. No worries. <laughs> I will tell you about that later, guys. We'll keep, we'll keep, right. we'll keep the bloopers for later. <laughs> but anyway, guys, it's been absolutely fantastic chatting to you all. And I wish you all the great success and all your... And all the work you're doing because you're all really busy, bless you. And you've taken time out to do this, and we do really appreciate it. Um, but all it remains for me to say, oh, I've got to remember, we have a competition which is going to be drawn, I believe, on Monday. And we have a pair of rosary beads that have been made by Kerry Greenway. Again, she's born, been on this little kick and she keeps making things. But they're absolutely stunning. If you go to Parasearch Radio group page, you will see the post there. Just like it, comment on it. Your name will be put in a draw and somebody will get picked out. That simple. Really is that simple. If you want to follow Parasearch Radio and all the other shows, we have shows five nights of the week. You've got so many shows and there's so many archive shows. You can find us on SoundCloud. You can find us on Podbean. You can find us on twitter you can find us on instagram and of course you can find us on facebook and if you please go to the youtube page please subscribe to it and then you won't miss any of them but all it means for us to say guys is say good night to everyone good night sleep, sleep tight, tight. good night guys good night Bye. thank you for listening don't forget to join us for more shows throughout the week find us on facebook twitter and the world wide web to keep up to date with all the shows right here on Parasearch Radio.